watch more of NorCal Carters. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and thank you to the Palix for being very patient. Um, the video process was new to me, still is new to me. Uh, so this interview opened up a lot of questions uh, and stuff I knew to address. So I'm looking forward to more video podcasts in the future. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we just did a quick warm up. This is Jason with NorCal Carters. And today we have David and Keegan Palick with us. And uh, they race at the Sonoma Raceway with the Vortex Rock Series. And um, I apologize. I just gave you about a five-minute warm-up on your, on your background and how you got started. So if I could ask you to do it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no problem. Well, hey, Jason, first, uh, thank you for, for having us. Uh, Keegan and I are, are looking forward to chatting with you and the, the overall you know, the karting community out there at large. So it's always good to be, uh, you know, in communication with folks with the same common passion and interest. So, yeah, so a little bit about the way that we got started as a father-son into the karting. Um, it would, you know, begin with me, predated Keegan. Uh, Keegan's 11. So 16 years ago, give or take, um, I myself got into karting um, with a little bit more frequency. I, as a kid, I'd always had a passion for go-karting my, or for racing uh, myself, but never grew up in a family that was a race family. We never went to the tracks or anything like that. Um, the greater part of my youth and my young and my my young adulthood was uh, in soccer. I was I played at a very high level in soccer, but when I hung up my boots in soccer, wanted to get back to uh, sort of this this interest I always had in racing. So long story short, um, about 16 years ago, I dabbled in an arrive and drive series with karting, was able to jump in cart and into some carts for a couple seasons and do that. And then like most people progressed over time, uh, you know, stepping up to getting my own cart and getting better carts and uh, getting more competitive and things of that nature. Um, and so that's the way I got into it. And then over time, um, as Keegan came along and as he, uh, you know, began to get in the, you know, probably eight, nine-year-old uh, range, um, he started to show a little bit of interest in karting, seeing what I was doing. And um, one Christmas, uh, his mother and I gave him a, a free pass to have a karting day. And so he took advantage of that, and we got him in a, um, you know, a, a cart that we rented for the day. And he did that a few times and kind of caught the bug. And, and uh, here we are today, where he's competing in his class and I compete in our class and we're up at the, you know, the Sonoma racetrack uh, and that's sort of our go-to uh, facility and, and group of people we work with. Very nice. And so you're running, uh, David, you're running the uh, Masters Rock package, correct? That's correct. And then Keegan, you're running the uh, 100cc Junior package? Yes. Yep. So uh, father-son race team. Yeah. And, and I noticed you have your little Sodi Cart shirts on, and so give a give a plug to uh, Sodi Cart and uh, the team that supports you at the track. Sure. Um, uh, okay, I'll start, and Keegan can add. So, uh, actually, the first cart that Keegan jumped in was uh, what you have an Illuminus? Hey, no, Tony Cart. Oh, it was oh, a Tony Cart. No, no, no. The first cart I ever jumped in was a Tony Cart. Then I jumped in an Illuminus. Then I jumped in a CRG. Then I jumped in an Illuminus again. And then I went in a Tony cart, and then I went in a uh, Sodi. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah so, he, yeah, so he sampled quite a few chassis there. Uh, <laughs> those were not all owned by us. Those are all arriving drives. But, um, for the last Tony cart. Yeah, so he was in a Tony cart for about a year and just did a, a, a whole year of practice and lapping and just getting the feel of the cart, right? And then um, and then we moved over to Sodi cart. And I had been in CRGs for, for uh, you know, greater than a decade. And... Uh, uh, then four years ago now, moved over to Sodi Cart. Um, and so we've been very, very happy with, uh, you know, that chassis and that package. And the team that we are on is the Karting Collective with Nick uh, LaDuke. And I've uh, been very, very happy with the service and the program and the people under that tent. So we couldn't be happier. And, yeah, we're, we're a proud representation or supporters of the Sodi Cart uh, initiative. All right. Now, were you happy, did you happen to come up through the Rotax program at Sonoma? I did, yeah. You did? I did. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I've gone through several classes over time. Um, was in, the, you know, DD2 class for, for a while, which was a, an engine package, which I really liked, actually. Um, but it just, you know, died on the vine, as, as they say. Um, yeah. And then 
moved over to, um, you know, the current program that we're in now with the Rock and uh, been really happy with it. I, I, I really like this class, the 125cc engine for myself, the 100cc for Keegan. And uh, it, it's good classes. I, I like the engine. I like the package. Um, it's, it's all good. Very nice. How about you, Keegan? How about what are the engine packages you've been on? Um, I've been on a lot of minis and then the 60cc. I, oh, yeah, I've been on a lot of 60cc's. All of the rentals cards are up there, and even to a Sony 60cc mini. And then, um, not that long ago, I upgraded to a 100cc junior. So I've not been into micro actually. So, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, and one of the reasons we, we put Keegan up, you know, the 100cc juniors technically starts at 12 year olds, but Keegan's a big boy. He, he's a, you know, he's tall, he, he's, he's a big boy. And so that smaller package uh, in the, the micros with the one with the 60ccs was just, you know, a, his body weight was just not uh, advantageous. Yeah. So putting him in the 100cc, he immediately liked, you know, the more power, the more speed, he really gravitated to that. and once you move up, you just don't want to go back. So it, it's been a good setup for you so far. Yeah. yeah, I think he's enjoying that extra power. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, even the smaller kids, every, every time, you know, the, the parents or the team bump them up to more horsepower, yeah, it they, they would never want to go back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, nope, we're good. I know, exactly. So, yeah, so you it's good. So again, you know, working with Nick and under the Carding Collective 10, it's, it's, a, it's a great team. It's a great bunch of guys. You know, the team is basically all, you know, adults and Keegan is, is the lone adolescent uh, young kid in the in the group there. And all the boys really bring him under his, you know, support him and, and under his wing. And, and so it's, it's a really good atmosphere there for sure. Very good. I'm glad you guys have a good fit over there. Yeah. 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 There's, um, yeah, Nick's been around for a while. I mean, it's uh, his program has been growing, so that's been good. Yeah. And it's Sonoma. I mean, it's the past few races at Sonoma have been excellent. You're just looking out over the valley, and it's uh, gorgeous out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's a, it, we, we love being a part of that, that uh, you know, club, uh, if you will, if you want to call it that. Um, you know, it's a haul for us. We're down here in Santa Cruz. Any sort of effort to get to the track is a two-hour two minimum drive one way, and that's yeah. without traffic, right? So it takes a lot of planning on our part. Um, we just can't whip things together. We can't say in the afternoon, hey, let's go up to the track and practice for two hours. It just doesn't work that way for Keegan and I. Um, and this has been a good thing. It, it, it helps us, you know, plan accordingly and put things in, in place before, you know, you know, we have to really have a program to our, our experience uh, to make it fun and to make, you know, remove the stress from it and all that stuff. So. But we really like coming up there. It's it's always great father son time in the car at the day at the track and the whole bit. Now, did you ever frequent the marina track, being that you're in Santa Cruz? Yeah, good question. Um, no, I mean I I know about it, um, but I've never been down there. I've done some autocrossing there in years past at the marina airstrip in, in the nine eleven that we have, but I haven't done that for years, frankly. But uh, I am aware of the the uh, karting uh, facility down there, but we've never taken up on that. I mean, we're, we're real happy with the program and the people and the setup that we have up in Sonoma. So we're willing to make that investment. Yeah. Nice. Very yeah. good. Um, let's see. So you, you've knocked out my top three questions already. <laughs> <laughs> so for, for both of you, you, and you can answer individually if you want, with carding, what are, what are your goals with carding? I mean, where, where do you see carding in your guys' life and and how it fits in. You want to go first, Keegan? Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, no. oh, yeah, actually you want me think to? for a minute. Yeah, you okay. go first. Okay, so <laughs> I'll, I'll take it first. So, uh, Carney for me was just, um, um, so as I had mentioned in my opening comments, um, you know, very big part of my life and who I was and what I was defined as was a soccer player for, for many, many years. And when I finished that part of my life, that part of my career, I still, you know, a very competitive individual, and, and in the back, in the background, always had this, um, you know, passion, interest, fan, being a fan of, of motorsports. So, again, I, I, I know, and I know to this day, I'm never going to be a professional race car driver, but I, I have a very competitive nature about me. Um, I like racing, and so this just seemed like a, 
a logical way to kind of uh, fuel this passion, right? And to be an affordable approach as well. Um, you know, we don't have hundreds and thousands of dollars of disposable income at, at our leisure to, to put towards racing, but karting is a very cost effective, fun, quote unquote, safe way to, to go racing. And so for me, this was uh, just a natural transition for, you know, this, these phases of my life where I wanted to take myself. Um, and so, so that's the one piece of it. But the other piece of it is, is just the camaraderie. I mean, I personally really love being around, you know, the guys in the tent, the people at the track, um, you know, having that sort of that competitive nature. There's always someone that's always faster and better and more efficient than you. So you're always trying to improve yourself, right? Solving problems, uh, being a part of a scenario and, and uh, you know, being able to, to fix things and, and, and get through challenges. All those things are, are appealing to me just as a person. So. Uh, that, that's sort of been my driver. But again, for me, it, it's not, you know, at my age and, and my goals, I'm not trying to go jump in a open wheel car on the big track, right? I, I'm just looking forward to having fun. And now, uh, you know, with Keegan joining me, it's even been more enjoyable to have that father-son relationship and, and all those things, sharing those things together. How about you, Keegan? Uh, well, <laughs> I anyway. I'm just going to go. Um, so I feel like the reason I really like karting is because it's fun and exciting and fast. You're always trying to get that faster time and you know that you can always improve on yourself. So you're always trying to keep pushing and going better on yourself. So most of the time you're really racing yourself, not the people you're actually racing. And that's one of the main thrills for me. So you do you look at your micron a lot when you're on the track? Um... No, not really. Every once in a while, I look down, and if I'm, like, really tired, I'll look down and see how many laps I do, I've done, and see if, like, the um, the thing's o almost over, but I only really do that when I'm, like, halfway down the street, so I have some time to actually, like, think. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so, and also sometimes when I feel like I did a really good lap, I'll look down. But most of the time, whenever I come off the track and, like, get into the pits, I usually um, check on the memory of it and just, like, see what I'm, what times I've got. Stand there for, like, a minute just, like, looking at them, seeing what I did better this one last, compared to the last one, seeing if I got worse, if I'm falling off or something. And then after that, I just jump out and get some water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so do you have a Micron 5? Uh, yes, I used to have a Micron 4, which was a uh, handy down from my dad. Oh, yeah, okay. that before, yeah. One thing Keegan's getting really good at and is helping, you know, him improve is uh, taking the feedback from the track um, and relaying that message to the tuners and the mechanics, Nick and Eric, etc., saying, you know, just sharing with them, hey, you know, it seems like the engine's kind of tapping out halfway down the straightaway you know, what can we do maybe toothwise to change it? So Keegan's getting really good at communicating what he's feeling in the cart to the tuner, such as the tuner can make those adjustments. So that's been a, a big improvement for Keegan at, early on in the season already. Yeah, one of my favorite functions on the, make, on the Micron 5 while I'm driving is the green and red lights. It's like, oh, you're going faster, 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 and then the red lights start flashing. It's like, oh, yeah. you pooched yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> true yeah um very good so yeah. it's so for you guys it's just it's not a, it's not a little speed bump on your way to formula one it's it's a true recreation it's a lot of fun yeah it, it, yeah. yeah so yeah i mean i can certainly say for myself that's that's true for keegan it's very early and right now you know those targets are not really on the radar it's more about the fun the learning experience I think yeah. hanging out with your dad and, and vice versa is a big, big part of what makes it so enjoyable for us. Um, and then, you know, who knows where things will go from, from there. But uh, for the moment, yeah, you're spot on. It, it's, it's, uh, it's just that great opportunity to, to go have fun and to go fast and, and uh, to experience ups and downs and disappointments and highs and, and all those things that go into making, you know, the experience uh, rewarding. 
Um, for me, I can't really actually see myself going up into big carts, really. I feel like I'm just going to, like, keep with go-karting. Uh -huh. I can definitely see myself in a 100cc senior, Yeah. but I cannot see myself in one of your chassis. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll ask the same question in three years when he's like, Dad, up us up to shifter, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> or the first time he drives one. Uh, yeah, you could exactly. sell my other cart. Yeah. <laughs> So. Well, and that's a big reason I want I wanted to reach out to you guys and have you on the podcast was I, I feel like our industry as a whole and just where it's gravitated, it it seems like the big teams and the big tents, not all of them, but a, a majority. It's it, the people under the tent if they're junior drivers, karting's just a stepping stone. You're in my way. Put me in a car. Yeah. It's it's what you know. Some of them are doing because they're not old enough to be in a car, yeah. and uh, it's just so refreshing that the two of you. It's like no, we're we're carters. We're enjoying carding. We're gonna learn what we can from carding, and um, that, that again, that was one of the biggest reasons I wanted to reach out to you guys because we need more of that. <laughs> we need more focus on, you know, not the guy looking to sell their cart next year because they bought a car. Yeah. But the guy that has the carts and say, hey, I have a couple carts. You want to come join us at the track? And this is what we do. And yeah. um, that's what grows the sport. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, the saying, obviously, Jason, is to each his own, right? And everyone has yeah. different different, sta different stages of their lives or different objectives at a particular point in their, their life. And, uh, you know, uh, for some people, that that's the path and that's the right thing for them. And then for other people, there's, there's other things. And I think we're kind of like in the middle, if you will, right? I mean, we're not just up there twice a year to go run a cart and go say, yeah, I've done it. And we're not certainly, you know, professionals. Uh, in, we're somewhere in the middle, right? Uh, yeah. We're competitive. We love, we, we, we put time and energy into it. Um, but at this point, you know, we're not, we're, we're not like trying to put Keen in a, an open wheel on, you know, big cart to, you know, on the big track in, you know, yeah. three years, four years. It's just not on the on the, the agenda at the moment. So so you're right. So um, there's a certain degree of, of recreational enjoyment for us. There is competitive nature to it as well. Um, but it, it's it's as I describe it, sort of the whole whole track day experience for us that 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 we enjoy. You know, from the moment we leave Santa Cruz early early in the morning to get up to the track, the whole day coming home, you know, we always go out to dinner after a day at the track and sit down and talk about our day and what went well, what went wrong, wrong. And, and that those sort of, that sort of interaction is, is really the rewarding part for me as a, as a father. It's priceless. I mean, you yeah, can't, I mean, you're making memories. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I, I was an asshole when I was younger. So excuse my language, <laughs> Keegan. So I lived with my parents and my dad and I, we drove to the track separately uh, yeah. We pitted separately. We did everything separate because I, I just, I was a little prick. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'm okay. glad to hear you guys are driving together and, you know, yeah. we're talking not, about yeah. how the I'll, weekend I'll went. In a year. Let's see where we're at in a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, we'll have to do that with this uh, podcast. We'll replay it. It's like, we'll replay uh, it. Keegan's like, no, I'm going to NASCAR. Forget <laughs> karting. <laughs> exactly. So, so Keegan, let's talk about you a little bit. So last year you were, you were awarded the Sportsman of the Year award by uh, Sanzario, Sonoma Rock. How did that feel? Yeah, that, that was for the, the when you Oh yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, got an award. <laughs> you didn't even know you got an award? Is this breaking news? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the first time I'm hearing this. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they gave you the Sportsman of the Year Award for 2020. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was some of the, you know, we didn't have the, the annual banquet, so, so some of those uh, awards were difficult to recognize uh, because we couldn't do it in person. But that was for the, the um, that, yeah, the uh, shunt. Yeah, the yeah. shunt and when you help the other drivers, so. Um, yeah, and, and, and I actually, I remember watching that race because I was helping another, I was spinning wrenches for another driver in that class. And if my memory serves me right, you didn't even cause the crash, I don't think. I think you were just caught up in it. No, you got uh, out of your cart, and then you helped. Either you took your cart off the other person's cart or vice versa, and then you pushed the kid along the way. It's like it, yeah. it was actually very puzzling and refreshing 
Because normally in a situation like that, if someone gets out of the cart, it's like, uh-oh, this isn't going to be good. And here you are. Okay. Go back to racing. Go. <laughs> and then uh, then eventually you made it back in your cart. And I, th I think you could, uh, kept going. Yeah, you, yeah. Did. you did. I almost got the place back up, but <laughs> I almost did. We almost, almost got did. him. Almost got him. But yeah, I mean, that was that was so neat to see that that the you know a racer gets out and helps another racer and then you actually help them get back into the tr on on pace it's like wow yeah. there was no there's no hands flying around or or fingers or <laughs> yeah i you know i'll, I'll chime in here I, it was really it was really refreshing the word you used was refreshing and i would agree it was very refreshing to see and you know this is my son out there doing this so it was even more special but to see, you know, you know, we always put ourselves in front of everybody else, especially in a racing competitive situation, right? It's just human. It's the nature. Yes. And uh, you know, to see Keegan do that was uh, was really, I was really proud of him, and uh, it was showed great sportsmanship. And uh, I just think it talks, of, you know, reflects a little bit about his DNA and the type of person that he is. And uh, it was just a really proud moment for a father, for sure. So how do you feel, Keegan? Um, that you just found out you won an award from six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, what happened in the turn was, uh, um, so I was trying to go around the corner, and then I was trying to, like, um, cheat my way up a position or two, and then I kind of got blocked off, so I tried to break, and then I ran into him. And then... I just got off and just pushed him back and then jumped in my cart, tried to start it. It wasn't starting. A minute or two later, I realized that I didn't flip the switch. <laughs> oh, the switch. yeah. And, and then I almost got him, so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he almost reeled him in. The memory serves me correctly. He almost reeled him in. You know, I think it was half, early in the race, the first quarter of the race. So he had three quarters of the race to kind of reel him in. And at that point, he was almost a lap ahead of him when he got his cart started again. And Keegan did an admiral job, almost closed the gap and, and, and got the place back. Yeah, uh, so, so we ca we crashed on uh, right when the race, right, bleh, right when the race started, we crashed on the second turn. And then at the very last lap, we were literally neck to neck and they just barely pulled ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, that's a good run, and that's why you don't quit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, it just um, – that that was kind of one of my highlights from last year, watching watching that going on. It's like, oh, there's, there's actually a sportsman left out there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. I'm not saying that from a position of I've always been very sportsmanlike because <laughs> I, I wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, but as I get older, and you mentioned it earlier, we all have different. We go through different phases in life, and we we look at carding and we take things out of it, and it's like, okay, well, this is what I want to get out of it now. And no, yeah. that was great. Yeah. So congratulations, Keegan. Yeah. Well, hey, Jason, thank thank you to you for uh, you know recognizing that and uh, you know just bringing you know reminding us how that was a, a special thing. So uh, kudos to you to, to to calling that out. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, it's uh, I, I just it just stood out in my mind. I just remember it. I mean, it's yeah. there's certain things throughout the season that you, that you remember. You don't remember every five seconds, or at least I don't. <laughs> and uh, that one for me was refreshing. It's like, oh man, this is so cool. Yeah, yeah. So tell us, tell us. Uh, I'm curious a little bit. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, you know the direction you're, you're taking NorCal Carters and and you know. Being a part of your podcast here is wonderful, and you know promoting your your uh, platform and all that. Uh, some of the things that that uh, are, you know for the audience, what, what what you're trying to accomplish in the community as well, like our goals and what what are your goals? Uh, I like talking about myself, so I started a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Simple, how all podcasts start. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean it's I, the, you know, I, really long story, very brief. Um, when I first started karting, I was going to Formula One. I mean, it just, that's just how it was for me. Karting was a stepping stone. I'm going to be here for about three months, and then Roger Penske's going to call me 
<laughs> IndyCar was going to be a stepping stone to Formula One. That's just how it worked out in my head. Yeah. Um, and then here I am over 25 years later still in karting. Yeah. Uh, Roger doesn't know who I am. <laughs> and the closest I got to a Formula One car was watching um, – uh, was that Driven? Yeah. Um, that Netflix series? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Drive to Survive. Drive to Survive. Drive to survive. Yeah, not Driven. That was Sylvester Stallone. That was terrible. <laughs> Um, yeah, Drive to Survive, and um, no, as I so I, I was very competitive for a number of years, and I, I mentioned I was a prick. Um, and as I got older, I I took a break from karting and just looked at it and say, wait a second, there's a lot of people that helped me out in karting. There's a lot of great memories, um, and. I didn't really do anything for a carding. So as I got older, 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 it's like, well, what can I do? It's like, well, I can run my mouth. And it's like, okay, well, let's let, let, let's start with the NorCal Carter site. Let's get the events on a calendar. Let's, um, I started doing videos uh, on YouTube that just basic how-to videos and just something to give back to bring more people in. And the whole idea is just to grow the sport as a whole. It's like, you know, the ones that use it as a stepping stone, they're going to be here. They're going to be here for a couple of years and they're gone. And they already know about it because their focus is already motorsports. And anybody that's serious about any form of motorsports knows what karting is. Right. Yeah. It's the people that, you know, think they have a fast Mustang that they race on the street, never heard of a go-kart. And, and they don't realize, you know, my shifter is going to smoke their Mustang. Yeah. <laughs> so those are the guys I want to get off the street and get them on the cart track. Right. Yeah. Most right. of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most of them. Yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of where I see NorCal Carters. Um, it, it just, as another outlet for, for the industry to reach out and try to bring more people in. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's good to hear. That's really good to hear. I mean... Um, it, it's definitely a, a, a tight group community, right? Um, if you're, close family. If you're, yeah, close family. Exactly. Yeah. If, if, you're, if you're in the circles, you're, you're kind of in tune to what's going on, but just on the periphery, a lot of people just don't know about it. And your agenda to kind of bring more people into the sport for whatever degree of interest they have, be it the pro, pro aspiring pro or the recreational uh, individual, um, just to bring more of those people together uh, is great. Just growing the community. So uh, that's great to hear. That's great to hear. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's yeah, a lot of self-reflection. You know, about ten years ago, but after I canned my Formula One dream because um, I didn't have money, talent, or de or dedication, um, I was kind of missing all three factors. Um, <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm gonna go into real estate. I'm gonna be a, a mogul, right? Yeah. And it got to a point I was working uh, full time at Swede Tech. I was doing real estate at night, every single night. My daughter was getting older or older and older, and my, my wife said, you got to do something. Yeah. You got to quit one of them because your kid needs a dad. It's like, all right. Yeah. And I looked at it, and what, what pushed the ball towards carding instead of doing real estate was I looked at my uh, social network. And the people that I called friends or you – know, well, yeah, friends. I mean, it just – the people I called my friends, almost 95% of them came from carding. Uh, the yeah. other 5% came from other networks. Right. And it's like, well, why, why would I want to go elsewhere when the people I cher cherish the most, I met through carding? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it exactly. kind of made that decision really easy. Yeah, exactly. That, that kind of makes me think of, uh, you know, the classic Keating comp uh, competes in, that group of juniors. It's a deep field, and they're very, very competitive. Um, and then even in the micro and mini, there's a, there's a good depth um, to that field as well. So I think up at Sonoma, we definitely have a good group of core kids that are, are a part of the scene. And, again, various degrees of their, their level of commitment and interest in, in partying at this point in their, their young lives. But, you know, growing that, that group of kids is, is really important. And uh, those memories, uh, the ability for, you know, Keegan to hang out with these other kids and to learn and to be competitive is all really good. And 
And uh, I think uh, we've actually just brought on a, a new kid under our tent, under the Carding Collective. Nick is uh, is working with a new family with a, a young boy that's Keegan's age that is going to be, you know, coming in and, and jumping in a SOTY cart. And so, you know, we've got actually another one kind of moving into the program as well. So all those things are great. And, you know, your your efforts and, and uh, the NorCar Carters promoting that, getting more of these kids out there on the track is, is just good to hear. Good to see. Yeah, I mean, we uh, one, we have to do something for the sport to just keep it sustainable and alive. Yeah. Um, and two, it's completely a selfish move on my part because I need an industry to work in. I want to work in karting. How do I yeah. get more people in here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Hey, it was really cool to, to, to have you now doing, uh, it's not play-by-play, -play, but play-by-play -play announcements of the races and the race day and having that over the loudspeaker and, and uh, you know, just add something more to, to our program, to our, our, our um, you know, our program up there on the Rock Series. Uh, so that was really, really a nice addition here in the last race. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I, um, you know, the Camerons approached me about it and it's like, no, I'm not an announcer. Yeah. I, I, it's, I, I know, I know the shifter stuff because that's, my passion is shifters. Yeah. Um, I, I knew Keegan's class pretty well because of working with Christian last year. And, yeah. but outside of that, it's like, I'm not going to know 90% of these people, um, at least as far as on the track. And they go, no, no, just give it a shot. You like to talk. It's like, well, I do like to talk. And, um, you know, Michelle Manning hooked me up with the, with the, all the entries and the classes and where they, it's like, so by the main event, I was starting to recognize helmets and everything. And it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think we, uh, you know, just as a, a driver and as a spectator watching you know, O'Keegan's race and, and all the other races, it was it was just nice to have that sort of that, you know, ha having your MC. That was cool. That was really someone cool. barking. Yeah, and then yeah, I, know they, I know the track is working on the PA system because it's been on the grid. Yeah. You can't really hear it. And in the far outreaches of the pits, you, you don't hear it very well. Um, I did experiment with putting – the race on my podcast on the NorCal Carters uh, podcast. And I think that worked okay as well. Um, yeah. And then we're looking at doing FM broadcasting uh, locally in the pits. Yeah. So everyone can just have a cheap little radio and at least hear, Oh, you're up in five minutes. You're up in 10 minutes. Uh, report to tech, do this, do that. Yeah. Well, here's an idea, Jason is, uh, you know, as they do like in the formula one uh, set up, uh, what is it? Pit walk right take, yeah take a mic and walk through the pits and go into the tents and talk to some of the drivers and the mechanics and uh you know that, that's uh maybe that's the next phase there that might be the next phase that would that would probably be some good live streaming stuff yeah yeah so yeah get absolutely right in, get right in keegan's face saying hey buddy what are you doing out there <laughs> what are you doing? Anybody want some free candy? <laughs> yeah so i and i i, I definitely i enjoyed it it's um I have a lot of work to do. It's it's completely different. It's I'm used to being at the track wrenching, not not yeah. not running. Well, I run my mouth too, just not with yeah. a mic in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we know we know your success with wrenching, uh, seeing how quick uh, Christian is. So uh, you're doing something right there for sure. I just like to fall into teams that are already fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see. All right. I have a couple of fun questions for you guys. If there was one, and this is for each of you, uh, Keegan might be a little bit harder because it's a, a vehicle question, but if you could pick one vehicle, doesn't matter what it is, and just a random passenger or passengers that you could have for four hours, what vehicle would it be and where would you go for four hours? With who? This is an easy, easy answer, Jason, because Keegan and I talk about this all the time. Okay. So uh, I'll start. So um, I mentioned early on that, you know, as a kid, I've always been a, a Porsche fan. I mean, when I was his age, it's like that was my dream car. So my my dream car is a GT3. I wouldn't get the RS because I wouldn't be able to track it very much. And so I, I would need something for, you know, weekend mountain drives and maybe occasionally on the track. So definitely a, a GT3 is mine. And as far as a passenger goes, um, geez, maybe maybe someone out of the factory team, right? One of the current factory drivers to really show me what I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, yeah, so that would be that would be my gig. And Keegan. Um. Okay. So I would have a Lamborghini Aventador SVJ, 
2020 edition. Then I would have, um, wait, what was the question again? Well, would you have a, a drive? Who would you have oh. as a passenger? Uh, Lando Norris. Lando Norris. He's a big Lando player. Norris. Yeah. <laughs> so Lamborghini so. with Lando Norris and yeah. David yeah. saying a Porsche GT3 with yeah. a factory driver. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, it, and so. a change of underwear, right? <laughs> and a change of underwear. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, so when Keegan hits it big in uh, his career, he'll, he'll buy dad his dream car. Yeah, if I can. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Now, when you guys go to the track, what's your favorite restaurant either around the track or on the way to the track? Okay, so um, there's this little restaurant, like, on the track. It's like a portable little uh, food stand. Uh -huh. food, food truck. Food truck. Yeah. And they have really good food there, and it's really cheap. I forget what the name is, but I remember they have a bumper sticker that says, how is my driving? Race me to find out. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, and, but they sell they sell really good food for really cheap. And then when we're done with our race stay and race session, then we usually, like, when we're all done with the day, we just uh, drive down. It's about 15 miles away. It's called Blue Barn. It's in a little, like, um... Half, like a area. It's in, yeah, in Madero, Blue Barn. Corte Madero, okay. Yeah. There's a it's little, called Blue Bar? Yeah, Blue Barn. Barn. Oh, Blue Barn. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then also, if we're at a race weekend, we stay in a, a, a courtyard Marriott. It's also pretty close. And then right across the street from that, they have a Red Boys Pizza, and that's really good. Okay, I'm glad you didn't say McDonald's. <laughs> I don't know how much better a pizza is, but yeah, it's Red Boy Pizza on race weekends, and it's a uh, Blue Barn when we're headed home to Santa Cruz. Very nice. <laughs> and very good. Yeah. Now, let's see. What else do I have for you? What's, what's a one or two of your favorite moments that stand out from your, your karting careers and your adventures? Oh, wow. Good one. I got a few. Okay, go for it. Well, first of all, it's when I, um, I think on my third time, um, or third to second, I think, um, time actually going up into a race weekend, I won the little lottery thing that they have, and then I got, um, I got $250 out wow. of the lottery thing. And that's one of the biggest ones. Then another one was I recently just won the third place um, season award. And, well, that's just because I attended all the races. But yeah, we don't <laughs> do that. <laughs> so that's a big moment. And then probably, uh, I don't really know. Yeah, that's Those are good ones. Yeah. Those are good ones. Yeah. yeah We're going to have good. to work on your social media promotion. You don't tell everyone that it's just because I went to all the races. Yeah. <laughs> you, you were third in a very deep field of, of talent. Yeah. <laughs> it is a deep field of talent, no doubt. It's the fast kids in that group. Uh, let's see. For me, Jason, uh, you know, one thing that pops in my mind is that I mentioned it a while ago is that uh, we'd given Keegan a sort of a coupon for, for Christmas, that one Christmas where – it was a redeem this coupon for a free day of karting, right? It's kind of his first day in a kart. So just seeing the the anticipation, the nervousness in his eyes, and jumping into that kart for the very first day and putting around the track, right? Um, and but over the over the course of the day, just getting progressively a little quicker. So that was definitely one of the highlights. Um, another highlight for me is you know just seeing the progress that Keegan does every single time he come to the track. So we were just up practicing last weekend, and um, he carved a full second off uh, the lap time. Now, you know, every day is different temperature-wise, track-wise, rubber, you know, you name it, wind, you know, the, the list is long, right? But uh, consistently, um, you know, it was clear that he was getting faster in certain parts of the track. It was, you know, the, over the course of the day, it was making these leaps of improvements. And so, you know, th those, sort of, those sort of events where you, you just see these these monumental changes and improvements are, are uh, you know, rewarding for sure. Um, so, yeah, those are some of the things that pop into mind. Very good. Yeah. And then the, I, I'd say another thing that just kind of pops into mind, too, is, like, one of the highlights has been really um, 
you know, aligning and, and being a part of, of Nick and the Carding Collective. Um, that, you know, his program, um, his, his sort of his agenda, his, his customer service uh, is all, has always been uh, just really, really good. And, and uh, jumping into that tent has been uh, a really, really good experience. And then, and then I, I'll, I'll give, you know, I'll back up also and, and uh, you know, give thanks to, to uh, the Cameron tent as well. Like I was parked under that tent for, you know, over a decade and working closely with all the, the group there, Travis and, and, and others um, in, in that tent. And those guys were wonderful as well. So, you know, kind of going back to, you know, off the track, the, the memories that we have, the friendships that we build, uh, both those tents have been, um, you know, rewarding for me and, and good, good memories for sure. Well, over 10 years as, as a uh, carding participant, that's a long time. I mean, it's, it, seems to, it seems like the average lifespan is, you know, three to five years. And if they're juniors and they come back when they're in their 30s, but uh, that's fantastic. I mean, it's over 10 years of just carding. Yeah. Yeah, no, you know, it, there's a reason we, I keep coming back, right? It, you know, it, and it goes back to the things we talked about. The fun, the competition, the the, the ups, the downs, the friendships, all those things. The speed. The speed, yeah, the speed, you know, that thrill of speed. Uh, all those things make it enjoyable, you know? So, for sure. Fantastic. Yeah, it, it, it is a great sport. I mean, it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. My, my daughter the other day, I, I asked her, I go, hey, do you want me to buy another engine for your cart? And, and she goes, no. She goes... I like driving the, the grass cart around because it just seems like it's going so fast. And I go, yeah, wait till you try a real one. And she goes, no, I'm not ready for that yet. It's like, okay. Yeah. But yeah, that sensation of speed, it just, I, I don't know. I have never been in a Formula One car, so I, I don't know how far you need to go yeah. in, in, in the car world to replicate the the performance and the, the um, ratio of speed as a shifter cart. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a reason why those pros, whenever they can, they 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 put their butt in the seat of a go kart, right? I mean, they, yeah. they come back to do that because, uh, again, I'm like you. I've never been in any sort of uh, vehicle that would replicate a Formula One car, not even remotely close. But you got to believe that there's there is a reason why those pro racers put themselves back in a cart regularly uh, because it's probably comparable to what they're experiencing and muscle memory and all the things that they can develop, right? Things happen so much quicker in the go-kart than on the big track, you know? Yeah. That's for sure. That's for sure. So, yeah. I think the other neat thing, you know, for Keegan is, uh, um, you know, I, I can say for in confidence in his elementary school, uh, what is it? I don't know. How many kids in your school? 600, 800 kids? Like 650. 650 kids. I mean, there's not one kid in that school that is go-karting. Has has not not no experience like this is is nothing compared like little league baseball yeah. soccer name it nothing is is comparable to what Keegan is experiencing at his age amongst his peers and that that's another special thing too for you know a, a, Keegan's very fortunate to have this experience for sure yeah absolutely that that's also kind of sad too it's yeah that yeah. out of out of that many kids there's not yeah. more of them doing the carding thing it's um, the town I live in, uh, we have we have another carter in the town, and we have a small town. And when I first saw him, it's like, what are you doing out here? Like, I'm used to seeing these people at the track. No, dude, I live here. It's like, oh, well, I just yeah. moved here. So is that the Isert family? And yeah. um, it's it just like, oh, wow, another racer. It's like, oh, that's so cool. It's like, wait, that's kind of sad because on a weekend you see truck after truck with bikes just loaded in and they're going somewhere yeah. and then every once in a while at least every time i see a trailer on the freeway i'm always looking it's probably not a karting trailer but just in case <laughs> yeah 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 you always peek right you're looking you always see look the, you look and yeah. see if there's a you know uh, i don't know crg decal or sodi decal or, exactly uh, whatever tony kart decal see if there you got a fellow carter on the highway hauling themselves to the track <laughs> i should probably do a much better job at my marketing for norcal carters and have stickers made up and yeah. have people put them on their trucks like oh there's a carter yeah yeah well heck if you ever if you ever get around to making a little decal you let us know keegan and i would be happy and proud to slap it on our our uh our you know our carts i i probably should do it i mean it's 
Yeah. I'm sitting here going, oh, I want people to find out about carding. It's like, hey, yeah. dummy, make a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, is there anything else you guys want to uh, highlight or touch on? Or? Ooh, I think when I first jumped in the cart, when I first jumped in the cart, I had a little bit of knowledge about, like, race cars and stuff, and I was kind of in them. I, like, liked the cars and all. And I, I'm a big Lamborghini fan, so, yeah. And um, I think the first thing when I saw this cart and I was actually, like, looking at it, I think the first thing I said was, where's the gears? <laughs> Where's the gears? <laughs> Where are the gears, huh? Yeah. 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 I think that's the first thing I said. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, you Sounds like we need to get about five of you from the junior class to start the junior shifter class. Oh, yeah. Thanks, yeah. Jason. Now you just <laughs> <stop the> game. Yeah. <laughs> Plenty of time for that. Plenty of time. Uh, I think Kimberly Cameron just fired me. <laughs> uh, I don't really. I don't really. But yeah, that 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 would be great. I mean, it's just uh, like the old junior eighty days. Yeah, ex exactly, but exactly. A couple exactly. series have already tried it, and for whatever reason, it just doesn't it just doesn't stick anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, as I said, I, I think it's inevitable. At, at one point, you know, who knows if that's a year from now, five years from now, Kiki's going to say, yeah. hey, uh, "Let's uh, let's get into a shifter here, and so let's see what that's all about." So. Yeah, the first time he drives one, the, the 100 cc is for sale. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, exactly. So, uh, Let's see if I got anything else for you that I wrote, that I jotted down. Tell me. Sorry, right, that's a that. good Yeah, he, we just had to, the gardener's here, so we just had to kill the, uh, the noise. <laughs> oh, it's. <laughs> it sounded like someone just ran off down the street. Yeah, it's like someone just drove through my studio. Yeah, that's right. It's all right. You might hear the chickens in the background at my place. <laughs> we got it handled now. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess one more for you. Yeah. And, and, and we may have hit it already, but favorite motorsport to watch or attend? Ooh. Wait, what? Favorite favorite motorsport to watch or attend, like something that we've gone to or something you'd like to go to. I know the one you want to do. Yeah. So why don't you tell Jason what that okay, is? Okay, so I would be a big, um, I am a big McLaren fan, F1. Yeah. yeah. And it's been really fun watching them rise through the ranks because I, I started liking them when they were in like 10th place or so. <laughs> and it's nice to see them getting up back up into like fifth or something no they're third right now i think they are? yeah as a constructor they're wow. third yeah they're right ahead so, of ferrari i have not watched formula one in years like I've actually since senna died and my dad my dad and i just stopped watching wow and i'm watching the, that the netflix show and mclaren's like fighting for last like what, what? bizarro world is this yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, Ke yeah, Keegan has been a McLaren fan since they were, you know, like, least, you know, whatever, four years ago now, it yeah. started, and uh, yeah, they were near the bottom of the tables, and they've methodically worked their way up, and uh, they're standing third right now, um, so Keegan well, is- Thanks for the spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but Keegan, tell him, he asked which race, so tell him the race you want to go to. Ooh, I really um, want to go to Abu Dhabi, Dubai. Okay. That would be one of my. That's one of my main dreams. One of my dreams is to go there and just like go there on a long vacation trip, see the see the Burj Khalifa, go to a race of theirs, and then just like endorse the money. <laughs> <laughs> see all the see all the supercars, yeah. right? That's a big see all the supercars. Super yeah. Yeah. So that that's on the wish list. Uh, you know, unique location to say the least yeah that's right yeah and then for me um you know i don't know it's right now kind of if you ask me this question like le mans I, i'd like to maybe go to the 24 hours one time when porsche is competing provided yeah. porsche is uh you know i don't think there's a factory entry they pulled out as a factory entry but a lot of the customer teams but uh i, I you know as i read i think there's interest in them coming back as a, a factory sponsored uh, participant. So I'd like to go to 24 Hour Le Mans. 
24 so, hour Le Mans. And then on the Formula One side, I'd like to go to uh, I'd like to go to Spa and um, probably Monza at, at some point in time in the future. Okay. Yeah. So and I, I've been fortunate. I've been to four Formula One races over time, and those are great experiences. And you know, would like to take Keegan and go to one, and that would be really cool. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. 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 What about you? Monaco. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Just to see the freak show of money. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Be cool. And, yeah. and then, it, yeah, being, I mean, it's just a storied, it's a storied racing circuit. You could just, not even a racing circuit. It's a storied circuit that has race cars. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think I just want to stand in the tunnel. Oh, stand in the tunnel. Be a marshal, right? When they're going whizzing through there, that'd be yeah. kind of a, that would be cool. But I, you know, growing up, my my thing was baseball. And when I was younger, my biggest thing is like, oh, I'm gonna go on vacation. I'm gonna hit all the ballparks. Yeah. And as, as I've been in, you know, karting for so long, it's a lot of the race car tracks. It's like, yeah, it'd be kind of cool. But I kind of want to do a kart track tour. Yeah. I was just yeah. like, hit five tracks in five days. Right. And it's just like, bang, 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 bang. Um. But yeah. That that's such a tough question because it, it always changes. Yeah, yeah. It does I mean, change. Indy. I've never been to Indy for the uh, five hundred. That would be on my. I, I would probably have like a bucket list. Yeah, yeah. Indy would definitely be one that you got to go to, whether or not you're a motorsport fan or not. Just the whole experience of that event, that that yep. festivity, right? Would be very cool, um, for sure. So yeah, there, there, there's a there's all these things. You know, you, you just got to make. Set your targets, set your wish list goals, and then you just got to go do it, man. You know, yeah. just you got to do it. Uh, yeah, I so. mean, Le Mans would, would definitely be on. I, there's uh, all of them. I mean, it's just there'd be so many. Yeah, there would be so many. So. I'd like to go to Australia and watch their supercars. That'd be fun. That'd be cool. Because yeah. those things look like beasts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have a, I have a, that's another one of the ones I'd want to do. So, you know, we're in Santa Cruz here. We're a, we're a beach surfing family. And uh, I've, I've often thought about, and I run this by my wife, it's like, let's take the kids and the family to Australia during the, the GP weekend, and we'll make a surf slash, uh, you know, uh, racing trip out of it, you know? Yeah. So I'm trying to pull that one off. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if that works. Let's see how well the cell goes. Yeah, yeah. Keegan's learning pers persuasive writing in school right now, so maybe I'll have him put together the... I mean, you're in trouble. <laughs> Put together the essay to the to mom and then kind of sell the deal. There you go. So. That would be a great trip, though. Yeah, that would be a good one. I mean, just to go to Australia by itself without anything else. Like, oh, okay. That I mean, it's on the other side of the world. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then you add racing to it. And then if you guys like surfing, oh, that's a good question. What? Okay, you just mentioned it, surfing. Uh, I don't know if we recorded it or if that was on the previous recording. Uh, you were talking about mountain biking that you enjoy yeah. doing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Are those your two hobbies, like outside of karting? Um, well, I do. Uh, my three main hobbies is um, mountain biking, karting, and then I do RC car um, off to the side a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 And then for me, Jason, it's um, my, my go to thing is surfing uh, just because. You know, that, that's my go-to thing. Um, and then uh, karting is uh, very much a part of it as well. And then um, I'll probably spend the most time uh, in, in the mountain bike, on the mountain bike. And uh, Keegan and I usually get one ride a weekend together. You know, we live right on the, right at the, the trailheads here. And we're right in, right on the Santa Cruz Mountains. So we're right on the trails, right by our house. We just pedal right to the trails. And so we, uh, we do the mountain biking thing together, uh, you know, once a week. And then I ride myself two to three days a week oh, okay nice yeah. so yeah so the, yeah those are the things we got surfing here we got the mountain biking we got rc cars uh you know yeah and then we got the go-karting as a, a little nice uh, special treat yeah. yep and then you have the boardwalk we got the boardwalk we yeah, we try to avoid that place with all the tourists <laughs> Yeah, you know, summertime, this town turns into a tourist destination, which is great for the economy and all that, but, yeah, we try to avoid that part of town. <laughs> yeah. No, I, actually, my daughter and I, we were down at Big Trees a couple, oh, it was a couple months ago already, okay. and um, it was in the middle of the week, so hardly anyone was there, 
We okay. missed out on the trains because they were closed. But yeah. um, I was just blown away. It's like how convenient it, it was. It's like, yeah. wait a second, these are massive trees and we're supposed to be enjoying nature. and all, yeah. But it's like, it's almost paved. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But the trees were just so incredible incredibly impressive down there just you can't even wrap your head around them yeah like, yeah, like how yeah. big they are yeah yeah i mean we're really fortunate i mean uh we live in a really beautiful place here on on the coast like you know we're nestled right up against the mountains and yet we have the ocean right i mean we can see the ocean from our house and and uh so we have the best of both worlds right it's, it's a really yeah. unique place to live so absolutely yeah we're, very nice yeah yeah so so, what, Keegan, what else do you have for us? Is there more? <laughs> um, not much, really. I'm blank. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to join me. Uh, yeah. And I'm really, I, I'm hoping this turns out really well. Um, but, but I'll find out here in about an hour. <laughs> yeah, Exactly. So I'm thinking for sure the audio got captured. I'm just wondering uh, the whole the screen thing. I really appreciate you working with me on trying to get this stuff figured out. Yeah, yeah. no worries. Well, yeah, Jason, thank you for for suggesting this. You know, this uh, discussion we had this afternoon and and uh, just sharing our experiences is is nice. And hearing more about you know, you know NorCal Carters and what you guys are doing and promoting the sport is great to hear. And and uh, again, it just kind of goes back to what both you and I said about this community, this friendship, and uh, this tight group of people. And bringing more people into that into that picture is is a, a great motivating you know factor in all this. So uh, yeah, thank you to you to, for reaching out and and, uh, and and everything that you're putting together on behalf of the community. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. And, and I better, I'm gonna write that to make stickers, make stickers, dummy. <laughs> make stickers. <laughs> We'll be yeah, proud like, to throw it on our cart for you. But that's kind of a sad testament. Like, here I am looking for other people's stickers. Like, wait, yeah. I need stickers. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not even wearing, I just realized I'm not even wearing my own shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're team, we're team Sody here. So uh, we, we want to make sure the, uh, the audience knows that, uh, you know, we're representing the brand proudly here on the West Coast. Uh, apparently I'm team TB cart today. Yes, you are. <laughs> and then I have my Gary Carlson shirts, and, and yeah. I use those. Those are my going out nice shirts because oh. they just have the nice script on them. And it just says GFC, live your passion. It's like yeah. those are good going out shirts. Like, oh, there right. you go. There you go. <laughs> and then my Thrash Weed Tech shirts. It's like, okay, yeah. those are my work shirts now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's all good. It's all good. But yeah, thank you. Thank you, you two, for joining me. And um, I'll make sure I shoot over the links and everything for you. Okay. Um, and if they didn't turn out, we'll just redo it. We'll redo it. <laughs> we'll redo it. Yeah, we'll have had a, a practice run under our belt. So That's we'll right. <laughs> but th then Keegan's not going to have the surprise of the Sportsman Award. Yeah. The <laughs> Year Award. <laughs> I won what? <laughs> Well, you remember you got those T-shirts, right? You got the T-shirts on the podium. Remember you got the the rock oh, yeah, T-shirts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was cool. That was cool. So, uh, all right. Well, great, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, like I don't it. know how this thing is going to end. So it's I'm going to say bye now, and when I hit end, we might still be on together. <laughs> okay, we'll we'll hang tight. But uh, yeah, see you at the track, Jason, and, and thanks again. Absolutely. I'll we'll see you next week.